Well, it's another warm welcome back, all my intrepid vintage dirt bike loving YouTubers, and thanks for your continuing support in making my video channel so popular with my subscribers and other browsers as we track down yet more of those long lost motocross classics from back in the day. Now this time round it's the turn of another Japanese classic, so please stay with me for the next few minutes as we check out a 1980 Honda CR125R Elsinore. Now as you've probably guessed this is another lovely machine that I spotted at the 2020 Telford Classic Dirt Bike Show and this little machine was attracting a lot of attention over the course of the two days. Now the bike is a 1980 model CR125R Elsinore. Now you don't need me to tell you how good these little Honda bikes were back in that particular year and as 125 motocrossers go in 1980 this Honda 125 had very few equals on the track. Now this 1980 machine was a vastly improved bike from the previous 1979 model which uh, many riders uh, complained of that the 79 bike uh, was just far too underpowered. Now this was a good machine from 1980 although it was still not without its uh, one or two uh, frailties and those frailties really consisted of uh, pretty harsh uh, suspension systems. But the biggest change to the 125 for 1980 was this brand new motor that Honda made for their new machine. Now this little 122cc engine was a stonker of a motor and put out about 20 horsepower which was uh, not too shabby for such a little engine. A six speed gearbox of course and uh, Honda also changed the cylinder to a centre port exhaust configuration this time round and equipped it with larger fins and a borable uh, internal liner. Now in addition to that Honda also opted for dual piston rings to help offer better cylinder sealing and increase the life of the motor as of course the previous 79 engine just had a single piston ring. Now the switch to centre port exhaust on the new 80 motor meant it was an end to the old style single down tube uh, frame. Now this enabled Honda to build this new double cradle work style chassis which was both stronger and offered improved steering ability. Now the new 1980 motor also had a bigger uh, Mikuni carburetor for this year and uh, this 34 mm Mikuni uh, was uh, quite a large carburetor for a little 125 engine and uh, was about uh, 2 mm bigger than the previous 79 bike. Now previously we were talking about the frailties of this little machine. Now it's pretty fair to say that the 79 Honda 125 had pretty poor suspension although Honda did try to improve this particular department on this 1980 model but this new suspension was okay but uh, it was still not the best and these 37 mm Showa forks offered uh, air adjustability and uh, a really punishing ride although Suzuki and Yamaha had better suspensions on their bikes for a 1980. Now also in 1980 these Elsinores had these remote reservoir piggyback units and uh, they were at the time considered uh, quite trick in their day. Now although they had uh, adjustable stamped on the shock bodies, in reality you, you could actually have just two settings and that was uh, either hard or soft with uh, absolutely nothing in between. Although mind you when you read the specs for these shocks from 1980 the reading certainly looked impressive but uh, the reality was that their performance 
on the track was pretty poor. Now the rougher the track, the more progressively worse these shocks uh, became and it was a bit of a bucking bronco ride to try and stay on this little Honda. Now one of the other strange oddities to these 125s from 1980 was to have the kickstart on the right hand side of the bike which uh, actually made these little Hondas uh, look slightly strange uh, in appearance. But once you got one of these little 125 reed valve Honda motors fired up there was uh, quite a nice high pitched uh, brap from that uh, little Elsinore uh, tailpipe. Now for this 1980 bike, Honda once again returned to a more sensible 21 inch front wheel for 1980 as uh, if you remember the previous Hondas in 1979 had a weird 23 inch wheel which were uh, not well accepted by riders on the day and naturally because the tyres were a weird and unusual size there were absolutely no choices for different replacement tyres. Now also in 1980 Honda began using plastic fuel tanks on many of their motocross machines from that year. Now I'm not entirely sure if uh, this particular bike is an original machine from 1980 although it's still a cracking uh, looking little uh, bike but uh, it appears to have all the period correct parts fitted for a machine from that particular year. But despite the 125's occasional pitfalls which were mainly focused in the suspension department, this 1980 Honda was still a little rocket of a machine with that buzzy 125 and reed valve motor. But as far as horsepower goes, this 80125 had virtually no competition in that particular year and it was most certainly the bike to have if you wanted to be quick in the 125 class. But if the tracks were tight and twisty then these 125 Elsies were absolutely in their element. Although mind you if the tracks were fast with long straights then this particular uh, 125 little machine would certainly struggle. But without doubt this 125 1980 Elsinore certainly had the look and it was an absolutely gorgeous uh, looking uh, little 125 Screamer and uh, if you were racing one of these bikes back in the day in the 125 class you would certainly have a superb grin from ear to ear. But nevertheless despite the bike's looks it's this uh, superbly engineered uh, 125 Honda uh, reed valve motor that uh, certainly makes this bike uh, what it is. An absolutely stonking uh, engine with uh, loads of uh, buzzy uh, grunt for just a little 125. Now apparently the footrests were another pain on these little Elsies as these would tend to droop or bend downwards after they had uh, been used for a season or two so uh, this was something that Honda uh, was looking into in their future 81 machines. But nevertheless despite a few niggles and not being fitted with the best of suspension systems these 1980 Elsies were extremely quick bikes and there was absolutely nothing quicker in its class for getting off the line. But this is a fine example of one of these Elsinores and the bike's builder deserves a lot of credit for their very nice workmanship putting this machine together. Now as you would expect I have many more of these classic dirt bike machines in the pipeline to feature soon on my channel so please continue to subscribe to see more of these long lost motocross classics. This video was brought to you in association with Wealthsport.
the world's number one supplier for all your off-road and leisure sportswear. Just visit their online website for more information.